What's up, everybody? It's your favorite bully's favorite nerd, and today we are looking at the Hasbro Transformers Revenge of the Fallen Devastator set. And the reason why I say bully is because Paul C. is a bully. I thought he was my friend, but he is not my friend. He wanted me to take a look at this, and I reluctantly agreed, but somehow I feel like he was being a bully, and he's not my real friend as a result. So I'm trying to debate what I'm going to do here. Like, I feel like we don't need to go through all the robot modes and stuff. I feel like we should just turn this thing into Devastator and go from there. But I will double check with him as to what the appropriate thing to do here is. I didn't even realize there was this many vehicles that made up that thing. I knew it was a lot, but I didn't know. I, I don't think I realized it was eight. So there's a lot of work cut out for me here over the next couple hours, and I think we should just go ahead and get to it. I'll text him and be right back. And size comparison wise, there they all are with Tiger Tracks. <laughs> done and done. All right, so what I'm going to do is just do Devastator. If you guys want to see me take a look at the bots, leave it in the comments. Um, if you guys are on Patreon, let me know on Patreon if you want to see the bots, and I'll put it up for Patreon exclusive. Um, I think the the key to this really is just that like I'm not going to like the way this looks, right? I'm going to hate it in many ways. I'll obviously try to be as objective as I can regarding its stability and functionality, et cetera, et cetera. But like, I don't think this review is really about like whether or not you should buy the figure. And, and Paul C and I were actually having that conversation and he felt the same way I did without even me prompting him. But it's more about like how absurd I kind of find it all. So like if you're going to be offended at me thinking that the bay designs are absurd, then just uh, I advise to just leave because I'm probably going to find it that way. Um, it's really just for fun. Like, I'm, it's really why I'm doing this. Okay, so we're going to do combined mode. If you guys want to see robot mode, then we'll do it in a separate video. I'll put that up. If you want. If I only hear from Patreon folks on Patreon, then I'll, I'll do it exclusively for Patreon. If I don't hear from either, then I just won't do it. All right, so combined mode, here it goes. All right, so first of all, I guess we should talk about the vehicle. Rolls like a champ. Uh, this doesn't work, which I think is silly. Like, um... I think that that should probably be a thing. I do like the window paint options. Like it, it's a, like a blue gray, but it works. And I think there's enough breakup with the silvers and blacks there to make it look good. In, and then the, the silver paint here looks nice as well. And this is a bit silly, but whatever. Uh, otherwise, yeah, I think it's. I think it does the job. All right, so let's go. Uh. I only looked at the instructions briefly. Let's untab these. And I think then you can take this piece out. Yes. And then you're supposed to take that down to the bottom. That's a weird tolerance there. You can fold that up to get it out of the way. Same here. Fold that up to get it out of the way. And then bring the legs down. All right. So each leg has a number of little components that have to move around. So you move this piece down, you untab the wheel so that you can get access to the track to kind of spin 180. You also have to get the foot or foot on the other side. And then you can continue to spin this for the full, for the full range. Uh, at this point, you just bring this back and bring this back and bring the foot towards it to collapse it. Same on this side. You're going to fold this piece down, untab the wheel, bring it down, rotate your track. You got to like, pull up a bit. Spin it, flip the foot to the other side, continue the spin until you get it lined up and then you just got to kind of bring everything back the way it was so that comes back and this comes back and you're good all right now we need to connect those pieces so we'll bring this piece up and these pieces around and they'll interlock these uh gray tabs will interlock and then you can kind of re-secure all this stuff. Same on this side. And then bring your tracks back down. And 
I probably don't have that tabbed into the right spot. I'm guessing. Oh, no, there it goes. Okay. And then you can think like that so that it's like a Z almost. And then you just bring this piece up and bring these pieces in. And that's one done. Next up is long haul. Uh, the one that's kind of closest to its G1 counterpart, I guess. And rolls like a champ. We have the windows painted with the same color, which I do think is a smart choice. I do think it looks good. Black details, and that's about it. It's a dump truck. Nothing really left to say about it. Um, a little peekaboo underneath, but ultimately fine, I suppose. And to get him transformed, you just untab it from this back plate here and loosen up the connection on both sides there. Extend these green pieces and then you just put this back so that it uh, holds onto those pegs, like to where it was. And you're ready for the next step. Then we have to get these pieces uh, out of the way just so that we can spin his, like his, his hips up, as it were. And then bring them back around fully. Take your side pieces, spin them around, and then plug them back in to the corresponding tabs on here. So it's one, two. And flip this piece so that it connects there and locks in. Then you just take the front wheels and rotate those down to the bottom. This already concerns me a little bit here. We'll have to see how it plays out, but I, this is another foot, I believe. Um, and I don't quite know how I feel about it, to be honest with you, but um, that's concerning. Then we have Mixmaster, another one that's fairly, you know, on on point in terms of what it, the vehicle is supposed to be with its G1 counterpart. Uh, this one, so I, this bothers me that the silvers don't line up here. It seems like something that's that should be easily fixed. Um, and sorted, but it's certainly not. It would have been nice if your cement bit here would have flipped down. They didn't bother to do that either. Uh, interestingly enough, there's no cement in this. You can tell because of that wheel. If it was full of cement, that third wheel would be touching the ground. Uh, I, I, I thought it was interesting that I, I guess it's licensed vehicle with the Mac symbol there. I mean, the Mac stuff there. And this was like a, a Decepticon symbol, right? But it's not really, they don't really have the details in there. I do like the um, windshield paint once again, I, but I think that like aside from general aesthetics, this one's uh, has the most wrong with it just right off the bat to me. The front bit looks good, but it doesn't have, it, it doesn't look as good to me. Just this stuff here looks out of sorts. Uh, the paint not lining up. And that symbol that's kind of like iconic, I think, for him from the movies, not being right, all sort of leads me in a, in a bad direction. All right, to get him ready, you take off the front here. And you got to remove these out of the way so that you can open this piece up. And then flip these pieces out. And also bring the face up and out this also has pieces on the inside that need to flip out and then it can come back in you can flip this down and your smokestacks back and then this will come back and secure to those side pieces that you flipped out from underneath the hood and you can see that he's got um <laughs> i don't know a face i guess you gotta split the trailer here and just kind of get it out to the side, the entire assembly. And then flip these pieces around to the opposite side. And then this is just supposed to be angled down, I think. And I th Oh, no, no, no. We got to bring these up like a kind of old school G1 combiner style. 
and then I think you're good. All right, so mine has already come split apart because uh, trying to get it disconnected. So bring this piece down and around, this just covers down and this piece hinges back like that. And that piece comes down, I think. I don't know, something like that. So same on this side, we're going to make sure that this piece is tucked in. We're gonna hinge that back and we're gonna bring this up in around, I think. All right, so then bring these pieces around and tab them back in to there using the bottom uh, option. And then you wanna connect these top pieces and then your feet come up and tab in there using the knee on both sides and this one's got to be realigned there and tab in and then lastly you just take your front part your cab <laughs> and tab it in to here and there you know and i gotta clean this up a bit but you get the idea all right and then this guy's name is scrap metal uh couldn't be scavenger or uh yeah scavenger right that'd have been too easy so uh we do have a little bit of articulation with this vehicle so you get a hinge a hinge and a third hinge so you can kind of get your Dig on, you know, and then uh, you got some real bars back here. Black paint accents. Window paint, once again, is something that I really like with this set. And then the silver uh, on the tracks is kind of, is kind of fine. You know, this is a smaller unit. But, uh, I don't know. I guess it does the job. So, let's not waste any time. This little accessory, too, that I just added on. I forgot to put it on, but, Yeah. It's fine, it just covers up some of the bits. Now I gotta be able to get it off, so to speak. Let me see if I can get a tool. All right, so with that removed, you take this, untab, bring this back. This sort of spins around so that it can lay more like this. And then you need to have this piece open because we're trying to form like fingers basically. So the same on this side, spin this stuff out, rotate it to the back, and make, just make sure that the fingers align properly. So like that makes, I think, anatomic sense, right? And then bring this back, and this is the, the third finger, right? This piece is the connector, and then you gotta bring these down a bit just for basically clearance sake. And then you rotate at these hinges. Out, I was going the wrong way. So it's like this, just I think to get a little bit more flair. I think that's right. And that's it. We'll go ahead and do this other yellow guy since we're here. Um, once again, we got a little bit of articulation, which is nice. You got a, a hinge at the base, a secondary hinge there. And then this is a clip on piece so that you can get that as well. And this sort of can go down. I guess these would be lights. I'm not sure. Uh, what, a, what am I? Build a bear. But um, yeah, it's fine. Silver paint, window paint still looks good. This one kind of... Uh, is a case of the angles to me a bit like obviously this is a little you know misgiving here but the rest of it sort of looks fine i do like that aesthetically plastic wise looks good breaks it up a taste nothing really to write home about here all right to get him into kabimo you just need to separate these tracks kind of from the body of it in the armature and you want to re-tab that gray tab into the yellow piece 
up there so that you get like a 45 degree angle. And same over here. Then you have to bring the head out and then this whole armature down and I may have put too much force into that. Yeah, I think. I hope. And this comes off and reconnects on the hinge that his neck is on. And lastly, sort your peg here, so to speak, and I think you're good to go. And we have Scrapper, pretty, well, once again, at least in the spirit of his G1 model. You do get a little bit of articulation there with your front end. And it rolls-ish. Probably rolls a bit better when it's uh, connected properly. Let's try. Yep, sure does. I have noticed that while I've messed with him a little bit, like a lot of stuff tends to come on tabs, specifically with this front end piece here, but not the biggest deal in the world. This is kind of messy. All of this doesn't look much like a vehicle to me. Once again, I like the window paint. The silver accents are nice. And that's about it. You know, they, they also, they kind of like all of these vehicles, well, not all of them, I guess, but a lot of them kind of share the same aesthetic as they do in robot mode in the sense where it just looks like piles of parts that kind of make a general shape. Some of them pull it off better than others. This is this would be one where I, say, I would say it does not pull it off as well as some of the others, but oh well, let's get going. Let's get started. And the main objective is to get this hole, so to speak, of the wheel plugged into there. So... In order to do that, you gotta untab these front end pieces. And on the underside, you have to unlock this silver piece and then rotate the entire thing down until it will line up appropriately with that wheel and plug in. So once again, on this side, we're just sort of getting it into the correct spacing of the wheel. Up here, um, spin these around 180 and on both sides and collapse this and bring these things out more pointy bits and lastly just pull that out next up is overload I I'll be honest with you I'm not sure what the purpose of this vehicle is um, no clue not sure I've ever seen anything like it in real life, uh, once again, looks very abstract to me. That might be faithful to the movie. I can't remember. But, um, yeah, this doesn't... This just looks like a, a rectangle on wheels. Uh, I do like the window paint, but there's nothing else to say here. It, it's, it looks like you tried to turn it into a vehicle-looking thing, but it doesn't do the best job of it, in my opinion. Without looking at the, at the model of it, how it's supposed to look. Maybe it's right on the money. You know, a lot of that stuff doesn't look great, so it could be just spot on. But the most, most of the other pieces did look like some sort of vehicle, whereas this one does not. He does come with an accessory. It's this piece. You got some green paint on there that looks nice enough, and it pegs into the back of the vehicle there and makes it look even sort of less sensical to me than before. <laughs> just silly. All right, so we have to split these legs and then rotate them so that we can kind of do an old school G1 combiner sort of deal. And then rotate these pieces so that we see the tires are kind of closest to us. And bring your claws around to the opposite side and then spin them towards the inside of the armature there and then the red pieces you tilt down flip the gray piece up on both sides and then swing your uh, armature back around and tab it into the back flip these wheels out bring this section down untab the sort of uh, drivers the cockpit I guess slide it over and then tab it back in then split the front end of the vehicle bring it down a taste and then this piece comes up and sits over top 
of the middle section. And I th think you're good to go. Like, it's really hard to say whether any, like it's so hard to say like, like, yeah, that looks right. You know, none of it looks right. But I think that's right. And then lastly, I guess they call this one scavenger. That's why they don't call the other one scavenger. Um, which is fine, I guess. I think the other one looks more scavenger-esque to me, though. This one, <laughs> like the wheelbase looks a little small for it, but what do, I don't know. What do I know? Um, it doesn't spin just like the other one. You do get this armature here. It is ratcheted, so that's nice enough. Uh, silver paint on the window this time, which throws the whole cohesiveness of the set off, in my opinion. I like how that's all painted. All the silver details look good. Uh, the innards look a mess. Like, zero pride to me whatsoever. Um, and I think that's I think that's all I got for this. I also feel like this should connect better. And maybe it does, but just stuff's not tabbed in 100% right. But uh, it has a tendency to, like, flop about. Just messy. Just messy. So... Yeah, not my favorite of the set, to be honest. All right, so let's get him transformed. You gotta split the center of these armatures, which will allow you to come and tab this piece in to there, and same on this side to there. So then bring that to the front, twist here, for 180 and then collapse this back onto itself and then it will come underneath and this tab will go where does it go right in there let's try it yes so same over here Twist. Oh, I guess get this out of your way. And tab into the side. Then spin these entire sections out and disconnect these bits, which will allow you to bring this whole section, you can close these tires here, down, and then on the underside of these, you want to bring the treads up so that it kind of forms the rest of the tire and bring these bits out, and then plug them together. There and make sure that they're plugged in here. And then all that's left pretty much to do is clean up. So this head has to kind of come down, get these armatures out of the way of the tire, which needs to spin and come down towards the other two tires. And then these pieces, I think just sit up there and this I think I already had it kind of sitting right that goes like that I believe maybe uh, I'm just breaking it all right so uh, the last thing is these tabs here have to tab into there so there's one and there's the other. Good grief. It's just, it's hard to figure out what it's supposed to look like because it's hard to figure out what it actually looks like. And what we're left with is a sort of general pile of parts. So let's connect these pieces. This sits over top there. We can move this to the back, this to the back, and this so I'm trying to th so these this bit here goes in between the two tires and then these C clips here clip around these two rails so let's 
give that a go. I wonder if... Yeah, these should probably be back. Set ourselves up for success, right? do this off camera so I got it it was a pain but I got it we'll take this and these squares here intersect with this section that holds it oh dude it's not my day okay so there's one same thing happens here except it's a smaller piece And then you can put that up against it. And then on the back, this can be stored. So there's that. And then I'll lift up a taste. And you have this conglomerate. And you're using the same sort of engineering with this piece and this piece here. That was actually relatively painless. And then I... It looks like this should tab in. But I don't... I don't see it. So we'll put that up for now. And then you take this guy and... Goes like this on here. Right. And let's see if he'll let's just All right. And then the last two fellas have to intersect I believe like this connect them. And not just putting it together, but looking at it. All right, well, you see how it goes. Cool, got it. And then you have this piece that connects the same way as the other one on the other side. And there. I'll clean it up, we'll take a look at it. So, have you ever seen a thing beg for death more? We're gonna switch up our stuff a bit today and do our size comparisons first with a Seeker, an uh, MP Seeker. I don't really have anything appropriate. Uh, here's a Legends class figure. Here's Blue Pool, just in case. So, I mean, he's, he's a big figure. To the top of his barrels and stuff, he's probably just under 15 inches or so. Um, yeah, I guess that counts for something. So let's get into the figure now. So the head doesn't move, uh, the jaw moves, and actually two places, like it has like a inner and outer jaw and they both can somewhat move independently, which might be able to help with the posing and stuff. A lot of paint on the face between the reds and blacks and greens and, and then the base color which is like this beige so it gets points for that it also like oddly enough and I think these are supposed to be angled back a bit it um, it doesn't have a waist swivel that I can tell and these things I feel like these things should be more secure as well but they're they're not all right so then there's the shoulders um, so you have a, a hinge at the base here which gets like a butterfly movement forward and back 
but this piece actually prevents it from moving forward in. Now, I guess with the elbow and bicep swivel, that should sort itself out and shouldn't really be a big issue, but still something to kind of take note of. Like they could have allowed you to get more there if they wanted to. But you do have a bicep swivel and a ratcheted elbow that gets you 90 degrees. So there's no issues there. And then you also have the fingers that move like joints and it's hard to tell which joint is which, but I guess primary, secondary, tertiary here. And then you have these two claws here as well as this. So, you know, you can get some sort of movement out of that. It's also not the well, most well-balanced figure. And so uh, I, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but like it doesn't really do the crouching thing. So, but I've seen people do it in pictures. So I did a Googles and my Googles told me that there's uh, something you can do and take some stuff apart and re-put it back together and then you can have it do it. I'm not doing all that, but it should have done that from the get-go. Um, so the rotation is the same for the shoulders here and there. And you do get an upward and that's ratcheted. Bicep swivel and elbow works the same. And then here you have a wrist hinge in out as well as uh, fingers once again. And I don't know why I feel like maybe I would use this as like a, do I have that right? I'm not sure if I have that right. But anyway, close enough. Primary, secondary hinge for the middle finger. Primary, secondary, tertiary, and then fourth knuckle there. So that works kind of nicely. Let's uh, get that out of the way. For the hips, so ratcheted, soft ratchet, should have been hard ratchet, forward and back, and out to the side. Thigh swivel, let's take this off. That's ratcheted also. Nothing for a knee, and then you get an ankle tilt down, nothing really up, and a, a rocker, which is nice. So it's the same sort of engineering for the this side. The only thing that's different, a little bit of an ankle tilt up and ankle tilt down. And once again, you get the rocker. And then there it is from the back. And I mean, honestly, I mean, it's not much different from the, from, you, know I mean? like, you know what I mean? Like it's like a pile of parts, which, which is, it's supposed to kind of look like a pile of parts, right? It's, it's, it's like, it's, it's right for being so wrong in a way. Does that make sense? I wish that it was balanced better, especially given the fact that like it's not really pulling off the kind of more iconic pose that this character did in the films for its brief vacuuming segment. I've also become aware with my Googles that there's another figure you can add into this, I think, maybe, and then there's like an upgrade kit, so maybe that helps it. I wouldn't know, and hopefully I never will. I don't know why I find this type of design just so offensive. Like, it just doesn't look like anything. But anyway, uh, so obviously it's missing its set on him. I'm sure that that would never see the light of day, even if it was conceived at one point. So let's do some final thoughts. So final thoughts wise, for one, I found out where the thumb was. It just fell off during the process. But final thoughts wise for the negatives, the fact that it doesn't kind of naturally hit the signature po pose that you know the character from, and then at the same time has tons of limitations regarding articulation and regarding balance, where it seems like the most natural thing to do would be for it to be able to hit the pose is really frustrating. It's like if it could do the pose and then have all of those limitations, I'd be like, you know what? I get it. But the fact that it can't do the pose and has all those limitations seems like a complete waste of all of it. Nobody remembers this character being standing up on, on his hind legs. Nobody that I know. I also wish that the chest pieces had a place to kind of tab in properly. I wish it was a little bit more secure in the shoulders as well. Stuff there seems to kind of flip about and like where it's plugged into the base underneath behind the shoulder has a tendency to come unplugged as you're manipulating it. Just little things like that would help this whole thing feel a little bit more secure. And that's not to say that it doesn't feel secure overall. Just saying that it could feel even more secure. And I think that's about all I got. Positives wise, the pieces of it actually stay together quite well. Like it's quite secure to one another. All of the eight bots kind of really do lock in and form a pretty solid connection. And that's even with like this one, I don't even have it pushed in all the way just so, so to speak, so I can get it out easier, so to speak also. But it really does secure itself fairly well. Also, I mean, the transformation is relatively 
easy for all the pieces, but it, it kind of should be. The legs are articulated fairly well, and from the bicep down, the arms are articulated fairly well. Also, I think the sculpt is kind of right in the fact that it's so wrong. Now, I know it doesn't look super screen accurate, but at the same time, it looks like a pile of parts, and in the movie, it looks like a pile of parts. So in that regard, they're right for being so wrong, or wrong for being so right, or one or the other. Maybe the studio is wrong for being so right, and this was right for being so wrong. <sighs> It's just a, it's a lot of like stuff going on for it to not look very, you know, but I guess it's part of the design. It's hard to say, man. It's like, it looks awful, ugly, and dumb, which I know you've heard me say recently. Maybe you haven't. But yeah, I mean, I guess it's fine. If you want them standing up straight or if you do the mod or whatever it is to get them hunched over, you know, more gorilla like. It's just a, it's a bit of a nightmare, really. And not in all, not in a good way. So yeah, if you love the character design and you're okay with him being upright or you're okay with modding it, then you should be fine. I don't know. I think you could probably find something better to do with your money, but that's just me. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.